Buongiorno, buongiorno, good morning, Be welcome, uh, benvenuti, uh, welcome uh, to, to Trieste again, thank you for, for being here, uh, thank you to, to those who arrived today and, and the, one, the ones that were uh, with us yesterday, we had a wonderful uh, preview and with, with some facts, some, some data about uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia state of the net. While today we are focusing on facts, and, and thanks to, uh, also thanks to Luca De Biase that yesterday introduced us to, to the main theme. If you were here, you, you can catch the video online. Um, we have to say that we are very happy to be again uh, in Trieste. We feel like at home, so uh, actually at home. So. Uh, you know maybe that um, last year we were in Milan for the 2015 Expo, and, but we think that the nat nature of, of this conference is well represented in, in Trieste, and so we are happy to be here again. Uh, we have some many things to say. Uh, you know, this, this conference, the goal of this conference is to promote uh, a digital culture, and and so we 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 have chosen to be an open conference, free free ticket conference. We, you have plenty of these conferences today. Um, we we chose not to make people pay to to be here, and, and because we believe in in promoting this kind of uh, of culture, and, and this is thanks to the uh, partners that we. Uh, work that we are working together since many years. Um, the first partner I'd like to uh, thank is the uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia region, that is our co-organizer uh, with uh, INSIEL, Promoturismo FVG, Autovie Venete, Fondazione CR Trieste, Unicredit, Generali, Illy that will offer the coffee as, as always. So. We, You'll test it in, in our coffee break. Uh, Trieste Port, Port Authority plus our media partners uh, that include uh, two different but uh, well representative uh, outlets that uh, can tell something about the, the, the nature of our conference. We, we are working to make this conference international since 2013. We, uh, we, we do this conference in English because we we think that in this way, uh, more people abroad can, can be here. Uh, and so our, our media partners today are Newsweek. We have uh, people covering it uh, for, for the UK, UK media. And Il Piccolo, of course, that is uh, our town newspaper. So facts is what we're going to talk about the whole day here. And uh, well, for those of you who were here yesterday, uh, we already introduced the, the concept. It's, uh, uh, we, we live in a moment when facts seem not to be as important as they used to be. There is a, a very, some say we live uh, in a post-factual society, in a, in a moment where uh, facts are not as important in informing opinions. So, this morning we'll be mostly focusing on facts uh, and uh, information. So, how information is changing, how people form their opinion uh, online and offline. The interesting aspect is that uh, at the very same time, the internet is this amazing place where you can fact check, you can find more information about almost everything, but at the same time is also the place where we have echo chambers, we have big social networks where everything that you see is just like yourself. So in some cases it becomes harder to form different opinions. After the lunch break we will have uh, uh, a very interesting keynote uh, um, by Johan Sample, who is our old friend. You, you came to all of them, right? And uh, it will be about uh, forming our 
views and how can we approach having to, the, the challenge of having to build our own truth. And then we will start thinking about how machines interpret facts. Uh, we are living in a moment where more and more software and computers need to understand uh, what surrounds us, and in some cases make decisions based on their interpretation of reality. So we'll, we will investigate this with uh, some very interesting speakers. Okay, let's say hello to people connected at home. We are live streaming the conference, all the conference on our uh, Facebook page. Uh, remember that on our uh, YouTube channel you may find uh, every single piece of conference from 2008 uh, and also uh, 2016 in a few days. Uh, we have um, more than 10,000 um, hours of uh, video uh, streamed on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's more than 100 uh, speakers and 100 um, panels and, and keynotes. Uh, we have a Wi-Fi if you need to connect and say to your friend that you are a state of an ad, use the hashtag uh, SOTN16, S-O-T-N-16. Um, the Wi-Fi is Star Hotel, you find that the reception, uh, the, the access code. Let me greet also the steering committee, they help us to think a conference during the year. Uh, so thank you to Jan Sample, to Luca De Biase who was here yesterday, Gigi Tagliapietra, Adriana Lucas, she is uh, here today. Uh, Marco Massarotto, Antonella Napolitano, Daniele Chieffi, Mafia De Baghis, Massimo Russo. And so, let's begin. Facts. Facts. Numbers. So, we... I mean, it is a tradition for us to start the conference uh, looking at some numbers. And uh, this year, last, last year we started this interesting collaboration with the uh, Pew Research Center, which is this uh, organization in uh, uh, Washington, D.C. And uh, they don't call themselves uh, a think tank. They call themselves a fact tank. Uh, what they do is they talk to people all around the world and they try to find interesting facts and numbers that help us understanding and decode in society. So we call them and we said, you know, what interesting numbers do you think that we can share with our uh, audiences here? And they send us a few numbers. So starting with uh, this. So we focus now on, on Europe and, and the, the big number that the Pew gave us is that seven in, out of ten uh, countries, uh, seven uh, of, uh, of ten EU nations uh, do in seven of the, uh, out of ten nations, uh, half or more uh, of the population think that their own country should care about just their country and not the Europe. So we, uh, to, to translate some way uh, this in, in political uh, daily life, we, we can say that the slogan Prima il Nord, that maybe you, you heard about, is very relevant in Europe these days. So uh, a lot of people do think that they should care about their self and not about Europe. Um, this can, can say something about Euroscepticism, and it's not just Brexit. These are data that, that came some days before Brexit. 47% uh, are against the European Union, while 51% is favorable uh, uh, to the European Union. This can say something about uh, how the, the people think that the political life should be ruled, and that has consequences in our daily life. While concern about Islamic extremism is growing uh, both in Europe, of course, and also in uh, some uh, Muslim countries, in Europe, uh, in um, Western countries, has almost doubled in uh, four years. Uh, of course, in, uh, in uh, France and Spain, it's much more uh, 
a problem, but also in the US, UK, and Italy is almost there. But also in, uh, in some Muslim countries like uh, Nigeria or Lebanon, it's uh, perceived as a, as a problem. 67% oh, um, smartphone ownership is growing, uh, and also internet usage in emerging countries. The median in, uh, in the world is 67%, uh, but in, in all the world, in all emerging and Western countries, uh, developed countries, the, the use of, inter of internet is growing uh, faster. So if we keep looking at the whole planet, uh, these median values actually represent how much people care about uh, having access to freedom of speech, about uh, having a free press, and about having access to the internet. Uh, you, you will be able to find all these numbers on our, on our website, so you can actually download the actual uh, research and look further into it. Uh, and we think it is interesting to see how different countries or different uh, regions of the planet actually have a different sensibility about uh, freedom online. But this uh, is still an issue, it's still something that people appear to care about. Strangely enough, not very much in Europe apparently, but uh, it's, uh, it's very interesting data. And the last number that we thought was interesting was uh, uh, this is uh, the percentage of Americans that think that uh, they will be learners throughout their life. And of course the internet is one of the key instruments that they use it. So the last number that we want to share today, and I think it connects with a lot of things that we will be discussing through the day, is the fact that uh, we are, if we want to be able to manage facts, we need to keep learning. We need to keep uh, understanding how to use the tools and the technology and the platforms that we have. And this is going to be a key aspect in our future.